This review is brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne, and in this movie I want to kind of show the history or the evolution, if you will, of the end business money product. I think the very first time I released it was in 1999, and I've been using FileMaker as my replacement for Quicken for probably since that time, since you know the last decade or so. And I haven't been working on the product solidly and always been all uh, fired up about making the greatest one, but mostly to fit my needs and to add features as I'd seen with the new versions of FileMaker. And case in point, this latest version, 2.0, was designed to accommodate FileMaker Go, the new version of FileMaker that supports the iPad, the iPhone, and the iPod Touch. And there's some different design changes that I made in this latest version. And I thought it would be kind of interesting to just see, you know, the history and some of uh, detail, some of the thoughts I'd done between uh, this last 10 years. So without much further ado, let's take a look. So, I believe I have the files in this folder here, and the very first time that it came up, it was called uh, Checkbook. Checkbook 99, I believe, for uh, 1999. Name of my company then was Lasso Media Services. And here you can see that we probably have the same uh, uh, disclaimer or you know agreement that we probably do these days. And... So the idea was that it was basically a check register for just one checkbook. So you'd be using eFileMaker for just one checkbook at a time. And you can see little things we used to do back then, like uh, value lists that would click up to a button. So you'd say if this value list equals this, you know, then perform that action before we had custom menus. And then the, uh, the entry screen literally was a list view, which would just have the transactions again for just that one checking account, so you didn't have multiple accounts. And then, uh, so you just have the description, the date, the number, whether it was a payment or a deposit, the balance, and then you could put things into categories and classifications for reporting, and then just add a note. And then we did have like a memorized ability, so you could memorize a transaction and then just have it auto-enter that transaction again and again. And then you had your cleanup and reconcile actions. The reconcile was, you know, uh, which would be kind of the font DA mover type of thing where you would see all the things that need to be done to uh, on one side and you would actually click and have them deposited like that in the old method before we had a lot of the, the FileMaker coding that we do now. So it was, again, you know, just a single... This was originally written, I think, in FileMaker 3, uh, matter of fact, I know it was FileMaker 3 because when I converted the file, it said FileMaker 3, and I don't even have FileMaker 6 on this machine any longer. And there were, you know, the memorized file was actually uh, used to summarize those memorized transactions because, of course, we didn't have multiple tables until uh, 2005 with FileMaker 7. So that's a brief look at the very first version of the checkbook in business money application. Now the next integration of the uh, checkbook came into a uh, the in business Soho package. Now, I'm not going to show you all the history of Soho because it went through many many changes. I'll just show you the latest release version that we had done and the integration with it. And so you can see we had this has got our clients and contacts, invoices, time cards, all that type of thing. So if you go all the way down here to the actual finance module. So then here you can see that we have multiple accounts. So this would be the Bank of Example 1, DEF, Bank and Trust, and uh, American Expresso card, and yet another bank. And then we'd have the all the transactions. Again, this is the latest version of Soho. It did evolve a little bit over time. And then you could actually do a range of transactions. And then you can see just the ones that reconciled, and then we did add some background auditing inside of the application, and days to pay, and comments, and then a series of buttons up the top that would do memorized transactions as it goes across. And then again, this was built with multiple tables, so you actually had an accounts and then a transactions different file. 
And that's what it looked like when it was integrated into in Business Soho. So then the very first version of in Business Money, actually I guess it was the, the latest version, but it didn't change all that much. So you can see that this looks kind of like in business uh, Soho, and if we go in here, you say, "Wow, that looks almost exactly like in business Soho." And indeed, that's what it was. I took the code from Soho, lifted it out, created a totally separate file that just had the uh, finance information. Matter of fact, inside of there, it also had you know these are our accounts, our transactions. We added vendors, we added vendor bills. And then we had a contacts, there was a staff module, then we kept track of equipment, software, mileage, and then separate files. So these were all harvested directly from in business Soho. So literally went in and copied, you know, the entire tables and then reset up the relationship graph and then copied the scripts and copied the layouts, put them into a brand new file, and then integrated them directly. And so and then we added a few more features like, you know, the ability to see uh, a range of transactions that haven't been reconciled when you do your reconciliation. But for the most part, it was just a total lifting of the um, in-business Soho code. So then um, FileMaker Go was released, and I was like, okay, I need to experiment with FileMaker Go for the iPad and the iPhone, see what, you know, can done. And I've been wanting to update the uh, check or the in-business money application for a little while. So I took a look at it and added a, so if we go ahead and pull up, this is the early alpha version. And you can see we updated the main screen. And then the finance ledger made everything bigger so they would have, you know, easier to click on the uh, the iPad. And at the time, I wasn't going to do any kind of iPhone functionality at all. And uh, wanted to make it more Fisher Price-like and make it more vanilla. And so it, you know, it looked okay. Matter of fact, as we can go, uh, you can see if we go from one area to the other so if we go to like the vendors you can see it still had the vendors module still had that old code in it the old look and then so you know what I was doing was just basically changing the carpet and the drapes and making the buttons bigger trying to decide what could be there what did need to be there and it was going along a okay but then what happened was listening to one of the podcasts, the FileMaker Talk podcast, and there was a discussion there between the two Matts and Richard Carlton. Great podcast. If uh, you haven't listened to it, I'd recommend it. But they, one of the topics they had talked about was the ISO theme library. And how it pertains to layouts to look for the uh, iPad and FileMaker Go. And I thought, you know, that'd be kind of interesting. I'm, I'm not a real big carpet and drapes kind of guy, as you can tell here. I go for more vanilla, you know, type of thing. But I've, I've owned a theme library and I've used it, uh, you know, off and on for different areas. Matter of fact, I think these buttons were kind of lifted out of it. Um, but I, when you do layout design like that, sometimes it, it can be kind of a productivity black hole, and I'm usually just about getting the things done. But um, I did, when I heard them talking about that, I thought, well, it'd be interesting just to see how those beautiful, gorgeous layouts that were in the theme library, how they would look on the iPad. And then that, they do look very good. And then I just kind of hit on one that was like, oh... Ooh, I really like that one. Uh, let me do an experiment to see how that goes looking on the uh, for in business money and do a quick prototype and see how that goes. And so let me show that to you now. So this is probably the one that I'm going to go with. Um, 
it's uh, kind of happy with the way it came out. And so this is, I can't remember the name of the layout, but it's this kind of green thing. And it was like, okay, money, green, it kind of fits. And so if we take a look at the accounts, um, a, a much better look and feel. And again, most of this is just updating the, the, the what I would call the carpet and drapes. Um, you can see in some areas, matter of fact, if we bring up the old one, You can see that this entire area, the entire portal was just lifted out and put in there. Everything else was, you know, the information at the top and using the different buttons and that type of thing. And so, um, and I took away the custom menus and I took away a lot of the other different modules. So I've taken away the software and the equipment and the mileage and uh, that type of thing. And just basically kept it with the accounts, transactions, vendor bills is now just called bills, and then the vendors module. And, you know, the, the layout design looks, you know, I'm pretty happy with it, you know, overall. Uh, these are just, again, standard FileMaker tabs. I didn't, I took away from some of the theme library, you know, more pretty type of things to have a more quickly functional, you know, manipulation experience. For me, anyway. And uh, so here you can see these are the different transactions. When you click into a transaction now, it replaces the whole screen. I had done a movie on YouTube before about branching it. In, uh, before, an in-business used to bring up a dialog box, and then I had a branch to where it would go to this layout. And then I decided I just wanted to have a consistent experience that goes back and forth so that when you go to the transaction, you're going to go to the one screen. When you go back to the accounts, it goes back in. So there are some design changes that are made there, but... Um, so we have accounts, we have transactions, and again, there's not a whole lot of tabbing going on for transactions. And then, again, the bills that goes across, and we have line entry. So this is where you could add a bill and then make a payment with it via a transaction in an account. And then we have the regular vendors module, and again, you can see all the transactions that you've done to a particular vendor, and then the details, and that type of thing. And so that's pretty much it for now. I'll be doing some follow-up movies on both the iPhone, the iPad using the Go product, and then more in-depth um, how transactions work inside of InBusiness Money and should be releasing it, I would imagine, before the uh, end of August. So thanks for your time, and by all means, if you have any comments, I would love to hear from you. Do you have questions or comments about the video you just saw? Please feel free to email me at info at Thank you.